All right, today we're gonna talk about uh, on a Honda unit, because I'm actually rebuilding one now, and I thought about it, because uh, I did get some questions on it, are the pressure switches. You know, the questions that I get are, are questions on the code. I got this code, what does this mean? Can I fix it myself? Um, and a lot of times, uh, some of the codes that were coming through with the questions were the pressure switch codes. So those are switches, single wire switches uh, that look like this. I'll give you a close up of this. And they're always on the outside of the transmission and they have a single wire going to them. These actually have a fairly high failure rate. All right, so pretty much the symptom would be when these switches go bad is you may not feel any drivability issues, but you will get the D light flashing, uh, you will get a check engine light on, and the codes uh, could range because on the units for the most part, there's some of the transmissions have two of them, some of the transmissions have three of them, and when you get them to the six speeds, they actually have six of them. So some of the codes here, of like for, for a second pressure switch, could be a P0842, which is a short, and P0843, which is an open. Uh, you have a P0847 and P0848 for third. These are just examples that I'm taking off of uh, Shopkey because I just did an 09 Honda with the pressure switches. Uh, P0872 and 873 for fourth. Um, this was a, an 09 Honda Pilot, came in with a third uh, pressure switch code, but these have such a high failure rate that we do them all. Because you don't want to come back again with the D light on, now you have fourth switch. So, you know, you got to take some stuff apart on the transmission that's really not a one, two, three thing, but if you can locate it and you can get it access to it, you just got to unscrew the old one and screw the new one and plug it in and that's pretty much about it all right but i'm going to tell you how to check it it's very simple to check to see if it actually is the switch and with the exception of one or two times it's always been the switch all right so just say you get um, a simple one could be like an 01 honda odyssey it has the uh, end cover or an 03 honda odyssey with the end cover and you have the switch if you get underneath the car, or actually even, yeah, I guess underneath or through the side, through the left side, um, you can see the switch is plugged in. Uh, that's fairly simple to get to. So what you gotta do is unplug the switch. It's a single wire, and you gotta turn the key on. You gotta get a voltmeter. Put the voltmeter to a good ground, battery ground, or a good known ground. Put it on volts, DC volts and probe the inside of the switch. You're either going to have 5 volts or you're going to have 12 volts, depending on what the computer is putting out. Okay, if you have that voltage, your switch is no good. If you probe the switch and you have no voltage, then start looking for a broken wire, a shorted wire, something to that effect. But, you know, cars that we've worked on that may have been in accidents and stuff like that, you know, we find broken wires. Um, but pretty much that's how you check to see whether you have a bad pressure switch or you have an issue in the wiring. Um, okay, so the pressure switches, you know, like this one here is, is screwed in. It's, they're always on the outside. It's screwed into the side, just like this. You know, you just unscrew it. But these things are, are very, you know, aluminum. They're aluminum, so you can't you know, tighten it up by hand and give it a, mm, a little bit, you know, I mean, they want these things like eight foot pounds, if that much. Uh, and there's also a washer on it, so you gotta make sure you transfer the washer over, because when you get these things from Honda, you know, they sell these, they do sell these on the aftermarket. My supplier sells aftermarket ones, and my supplier sells OE ones. Is there a bit of a difference in price? Yeah, there is. You know, I could get an aftermarket one for $29, and versus the OE one, which could be $60, but I've had the aftermarket ones come back on me under warranty, and then you just, you know, you gotta switch it out again, and then that's when you put the Honda one in. So, you know, a couple times that I had that happen, it's just, 
totally OE. If my supplier does not have it, I get it out of Honda. You know, when we did this 09 Honda Pilot, I called them up. I said, hey, I want the second, third, and fourth pressure switches. Oh, I got them. Yeah, we got them, no problem. I said, why do you stop all that stuff? Well, he says, these switches fly off the shelf. So um, they do have a high failure rate. That's another reason why we do all of them versus just the one for the code. So uh, it does have a washer on it. So you got to make sure if you take the old one out, the washer could get stuck to the case, the washer could get stuck to the switch. Just make sure it's there when you put the new one in. All right, if you wanted a, a new washer, I believe Honda sells the new washer as well. So another reason why uh, I wanted to make the video on the pressure switches is as, as because of lately, maybe the last year or so, they've been updating the switches. Okay, so for an instance, and I have, like I, I want to give you a shot of late switches, uh, late switches, early switches, um, but when I get a little closer uh, on the bench. But they have been updating the pressure switches, um, meaning they're coming in a different color. So back in the day, I'd call up and say, "Hey, on the on this um, you know 01 Odyssey, I need the second switch. Okay, what color is it?" That's how we would normally identify it. And it, some would have a step, some would be, you know, just flat like this. Others would have a step. So I would say it's a black pressure switch, no step. So they would go in there in their parts database, find it, and send it to me. Now they're being updated. So for instance, this one was gray. So I had called my supplier, and I and and I just make sure that he has the OE ones. Otherwise, I'll, I'll just call Honda, no problem. We got a local dealership less than a mile away that we give a lot of business to. Um, so I tell him my um, third pressure switch on, well both pressure switches on this O3 element, I said one is gray, one is green. He says, okay, so the gray one, uh, this is the part number, the part number changed to this part number, that switch is now black in color. All right, so here is the pressure switch, the original one, here is the new updated one. All right, so the only thing that you got to be careful of, but I guess maybe if you get them through Honda or get them through a, an online supplier, just make sure you're getting OE. You know, if you have one that is, for instance, on probably about an 03, 04 Honda Odyssey, they have they come through with uh, a tan one and a gray one like this. All right, so when I order those switches, I already know what I'm getting because I do so many of them. You know, here we do a minimum of one Honda or Acura a week, every week. So I kind of know what to expect. So for instance, on that one, okay, the gray, the gray switch is this black one, okay? And the tan switch was updated. He tells me this is the part number, this is the new part number, this is the new color, which is a white switch. So if you order two pressure switches for the Honda 03 Honda Odyssey, which I believe is uh, uh, maybe third or fourth, um, you're going to get two switches, two totally different colors. Which one goes where? So I, I guess when you're ordering it, just you know, specify, can you say is this part number, the second switch is this part number, the third switch. I'm not uh, sure. If it actually comes on a bill, it just might say fluid pressure switch, part number, and the price. You know, I don't think it's gonna, may not specify second, third, or fourth. Um, for instance, on this, I actually have to look on the on the invoice that we just did. On the 03, I'm sorry, 09 Honda Pilot we just did, I had two gray ones, and I had two tan ones and a gray one. Okay, so the two tan ones, these are the later switches. This actually is one of them. Here's one tan, one of the gray ones. Okay, it's very you know small now. They've updated these switches again. And these two I got were white in color, and this one I got was black in color. So we knew the two were the same. They go there, the other one goes on the on the third. So we kind of knew that, you know, just by what comes out. So, but just be careful because again, the switches are being updated. So what these switches do is they report back to the computer. Uh, that you're in second gear, in third gear, okay? And they close at a certain PSI. So 
you could have a switch that closes at 28 PSI. You could have a switch that closes at 38 PSI. You could have one that closes at 40 PSI. But that's what, that is the function of the switch. There is the computer puts out a, a five or 12 volt reference. The oil comes in here, creates the ground, and then it more than likely takes the voltage away when it goes into third. So you'll have no volts on the wire. Okay, if you have a scan tool, you can monitor the, the data for third switch. It'll go, just go to on off, and you can know if the switch is working. But if, if you have, again, very high failure rate, and if you have one of these that comes in with a certain code, you should do them all. Just check the one wire. It's a single wire, key on engine off. If you got a five or 12 volt reference, you know, get the switch. And just don't go crazy tightening it. You know, you don't want to break the thing and put it inside there and it'll be a real pain to get it out. But um, again, I screw it in by hand with the washer, give it a just a little bit, and that's it, done. Uh, so let me get a little closer and I'll just give you a shot of these switches here. Uh, these are, are laid. These, you know, they, they, I was looking on charts and, you know, these are considered early, but I have in, in charts I, and certain models, they are using them up to probably 2011. These might have came out around maybe 2008 on certain later, later models on five speeds. You're really not going to see these on, on uh, four speeds, probably five speeds and up. You'll see these. And for instance, here is... I did a six-speed Honda in a 12 Odyssey, and this one has six of them. So there's this, I changed this whole secondary valve body. It's very reasonable, just a couple hundred dollars with all the solenoids and everything, because that guy was um, like an Uber guy, and I didn't want him to have any issues. But you know, generally the Honda's you know, solenoids are very, very good. Uh, so we have one, two, and three are all the same. So I bought this whole setup, which changed these three switches, and then I had bought the other three that went on to you know the covers and the casings and stuff like that. Um, but again, you know, high failure rate. So um, this is something you probably could do yourself if you can identify where the switch is. Uh, a lot of times, like on this Honda Pilot, I kind of had an idea, but you know, we had to take the battery out. We took the um, you know the whole air box out with the snorkel tube. We took the battery box out and you get a nice bird's eye view of the transmission. And then we just kind of started looking for the switches. And one of them was down by the speed sensors. One was right on top by linear A. And then the other one was more uh, up towards the back of the unit. But once you get some room in there and you can see, um, it's usually not a problem. And on the earlier ones, you know, they're usually not a problem at all. Uh, sometimes they have one, for instance, on Right, this is the this sits up against the engine and there's one right here. I'll give you a close-up shot of this. I'm still waiting for this. This could be a little tricky. This is second switch. That could be a little tricky to get to. Uh, sometimes the water pipes and everything are in the way. Uh, but let me give you a close-up shot of this stuff here. I'll show you that again. And again with the washers, you know, I've got to watch for the washers. Uh, make sure they uh, get put back. Uh, let me get a little closer and we'll, uh, I'll show you some of that stuff. Okay. Again, so here is the one that came off of this unit and this. They just screw right on. Very, very simple. All right, as long as you can find them, you can probably change these things yourself if you have the codes for them. Okay, so here, here is the difference. And here is the updated switch, and here is a later switch. You know, you can see the difference, very, very small. It's still, check it the same way, one wire, but they just changed the design of it. All right, here's uh, gray. So this one, this gray, uh, the gray was updated to black, and the tan was updated to white. All right, so more than likely when you order it, the color that you get. I think they, you know, there's one that's green, like on, on this, on this here. I'm not sure that the green has been updated. 
still, still may be green, because I'm waiting for one. Uh, actually, I'll know tomorrow when I get it, because the one on the bell house in here was green. So I'm gonna see what color that is when that comes. And that goes right here, and this, again, you know, not that easy to get to. So this one's gonna go in right here, and you really gotta kinda of look for it. And here is the, of course, the pressure tap is right here for a second gear. And another way to tell also uh, if you have, um, well, I guess you could look on the scan tool, you can see if the switch is working. Um, if you have the code and you clear the code and you drive it and the switch is no good, it still may change state you know, on, off, on, off, but if you have a grounded wire, it may not change state, but that's why uh, you got to check it with the voltmeter, see how many volts you have, um, and then you can kind of, more than likely, if you have the right amount of voltage, it's the switch. You know, very rare uh, have I come across uh, anything with electrical, you know, except, again, cars that have been in accidents. So I just wanted to do a quick video on the pressure switches. Uh, I'm going to finish up this transmission now, and I'm just waiting for some more parts. Uh, but that's about it on the Honda pressure switches, and that pretty much goes for any Honda. They really work the same from the four speeds up to the six speeds. Uh, I did get a call uh, actually on the real late one on the 17. Um, but we're still kind of in, I'm still researching that. That's actually a nine speed. I've never seen one of those yet, but they'll be here eventually. Uh, all right, so I guess that's about it. Honda pressure switches. I thank you guys for watching. Have a great day, and we'll see you next one.